Well, a big blow for the Georgia football team. Wide receiver George Pickens tore the ACL in his right knee at yesterday's practice. The injury likely going to cost him most, if not all, of the 21 season. Uh, just for reference, Christmas is nine months from tomorrow. No word yet on when he's going to have surgery. As a sophomore last season, caught 36 passes for 513 yards and six touchdowns. His head coach, Kirby Smart, with the following statement, the good news is the MRI showed it to be an isolated injury with no other structures involved. George is a hard worker. I know he will bring the same work ethic to rehab that he shows in practice every day. It's a Georgia team that was ranked number three in Dennis Dodd's very early 21 rankings. We have Chip Patterson with us. Chip, what does this do to this Bulldog offense? This is a huge blow uh, for the Georgia passing game, and I think that this is a big bummer for everyone that was looking forward to seeing the Bulldogs really take a big step forward. They brought in Todd Monken as an offensive coordinator. They brought in JT Daniels from USC. And while JT Daniels was not really deemed uh, quite ready as he's recovering from his own injury to get things started at the beginning of Georgia's season, I think anybody who paid close attention to Georgia down the stretch of the regular season saw not only that JT Daniels Daniels was going to give Georgia a passing attack unlike anything we'd seen recently, but that George Pickens was going to be the star wide receiver. And JT Daniels mixed with George Pickens uh, with a new offense was the recipe for us to really see the Bulldogs get a little high flying, start moving it through the air, be more than just a ground and pound offense. And so to lose without a doubt the most talented player, I mean, a five star prospect coming out of high school, uh, they went into Alabama to go get him. When you are at Georgia and you're on that coaching staff, you go to recruit alphas like George Pickens. Now, we only saw in terms of production flashes of what he was able to do during his first two seasons. He had a little bit of an injury issue midseason last year. But I again go back to that small sample size of when JT Daniels was put in as the new starting quarterback and George Pickens clearly emerged as the number one receiver there. Now, the, the thing that's really disappointing is this is a wide receiver room that's been dealing with some injuries. Uh, Dominic Blaylock uh, missed a lot of time last year they're hoping to be able to bring him back but to continue to see these wide receivers go down with these injuries is really frustrating Karis Jackson is your number one choice to be able to step up and and probably become the new number one there Jermaine Burton and I would also say look to the tight ends John Fitzpatrick and Darnell Washington those are going to be other players that are going to get a lot of looks you're always going to have a talented roster in every single position room when you're at Georgia but there are some special and unique talents and at 6'3", 210 pounds, able to make uh, catches that are contested. George Pickens is special and for him not to be a part of the passing attack, it hurts JT Daniels, it hurts JT Daniels Heisman chances, it hurts Georgia's ability to win the SEC East and the SEC Championship. They will recover. There are options. There are players who need to step up, but to, uh, to say that they can just keep things moving is to ignore the ceiling of George Pickens. What did you expect out of Georgia this season, and how does this injury change that? I expected them to win the SEC East. I expected them to show up in Atlanta with a chance to play for the SEC championship. And regardless of that result, be one of the top six teams when we sat there on selection day to talk about who is going to be making the college football playoff. I think that this defensive front in particular remains one of the best in the entire country. There's talent just through and through. And I think that as the secondary has a lot to replace, that was where we were going to see Georgia's offense almost have to open up, right? Because when Georgia has the best defense in the country and no one can move the ball on them, then Kirby Smart's fine just playing some ball control, playing some field position. But, you know, I think that the secondary might be had. The quarterbacks and the passing attacks in the SEC are starting to get more impressive. You need to be able to go and, and make big throws. You need to be able to move the ball through the air if you want to be able to win championships. And I think that JT Daniels, again, at what he showed at the end of the season, led me to believe he could be one of the best quarterbacks in the entire SEC. And so George Pickens' absence doesn't change me from picking Georgia to win the SEC East, but it does change my confidence in Georgia being able to compete for a national championship. I will be paying close attention to Georgia spring practice, the offseason workouts, to see what the confidence is in a player like Dominic Blaylock, who's got experience but is coming back from injury, and whether they believe that somebody like Harris Jackson or Jermaine Burton can rise to the occasion and really be that alpha in the wide receiver room. No word yet on when he's going to undergo surgery, but uh, it's... Um 
it's it's easy to assume that he's going to miss at least most of the season, if not all. College football playoff would be in a little more than nine months. That's Chip Patterson joining us here on HQ. All things college football on the Cover 3 podcast. The latest episode focusing on the Big Ten West. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.